G'day, as you probably know, I've spent virtually most of my adult life traipsing around the globe, seeing the world at its best and its worst. But along the way, I've actually met some quite inspirational people. This story is about one of them. It's about one woman's crusade to change the world, you could say, one goal at a time. Australia grants visas to about 13,000 humanitarian refugees, among them thousands of children who have survived some of the worst crimes in history. The Football United program was founded in 2006 by Anne Bunde Beroust to give them and other disadvantaged youth a safe haven in Australia, a sanctuary where they could feel comfortable forget the troubles of the past and begin finding their feet in their new homeland. This isn't about football, this is about building our communities. It's about working together. It's about equal opportunities for anybody. Passion for something that you can't describe really in words. You just have to see. I believe strongly in what football can provide to society um, and particularly to kids and we haven't had enough good programs and well-run programs. Football is something that anybody can play. Uh, guys, girls, doesn't matter where you're from, your background, or even what's happening at home. It's very important in the sense that it allows them to basically forget their worries, enjoy something that they probably haven't been able to enjoy freely in their countries at home. I've always wanted to find a way to impact on building peace in this world and through young people I really believe we have a chance. So for me, this is as much a dream as it is for these kids. I grew up in the United States and as long as I can remember all I've ever wanted to do is make peace, help people. When she was 21, Anne joined the Peace Corps and moved to Africa. It was there that she met Thomas Biroust, a Frenchman who would soon become her husband. Several years later, they moved to France. In 1998, we were living in Paris. We had been li living in Paris for quite a few years, and the World Cup was something exceptional. This is the day my son Florian and I, we were getting ready to go down to the Champs-Élysées for the celebration of the French victory. My mom took me out of school that day and we went amongst the crowd and got to see the 98 French team hoist the trophy. It was absolutely mind-blowing experience. I remember just feeling the moment and looking at all these people, old, young, rich, poor, yellow, brown, all together just in ecstatic joy. And it lasted for like two years. It was a powerful moment that would forever change her life. Anne moved to Australia in 2002 and soon began working in post-conflict countries. It was then that she had her Eureka moment. I came down the mountains from the Solomons. I was in the Solomon Islands. And these kids playing barefoot soccer. And I just went, that's it. I flashed back to France. I said, I got to do something. Up until then, the word refugee didn't mean anything to me. And then I saw refugee camps. And I just couldn't believe the horror of people losing their families, not being able to ever return to what they call home. I was born in Togo. I escaped the war with my parents to Ghana. I was born in Iraq. During the war, my father was taken to prison. I was born in refugee camp in Kenya, and I don't know what happened to my parents. The general Australian community would be shocked to hear about what some of these kids have been through. But when you see them playing football, all you see is a child. You don't see a victim, and that's the real beauty of it. We have kids from Latin America, some Iranian girls, Liberia, Togo, Kenya. For the boys, we've got 
Bosnia, Serbia, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. My dream is to play for Australia, to play for the Socceroos. I always dream about it every night. I wish I can play for Australia. We love football and we're doing Australia. Namaste. When I first met Anne, I thought she was not true because she can be so generous and she can be really on a mission to help people. And after now, poof, 27 years, the truth is she means it. She's really out there to, 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 sa to save the world. Anne is a consummate saleswoman. Over the scope of one coffee, she's taken everything. You know, she's got your keys, she's got your mobile, she's got your email, she's got your card, she's got the whole lot. She, well, off she goes and, and next thing you know, you're part of the program. Well, when she sees something that she thinks is right or something that she wants, she goes after it like a bull. Hey, Luol! Have you given your list to June? The work that she's done with the project, the work that she does at the university, the the work that she does at home, I mean, our family is really chaotic. It's a lot of hard work as it is, and to me, it seems like she just juggles it all so well. But Anne's passion for her program has come at a cost close to her heart. I know, you're sick of hearing about it. No, I'm not. No, no, that's fine. Sometimes my family has to share me and has to share me a lot, and that's hard for them. Thanks for all your help, because you guys, I couldn't have done it without you being so good. Yeah, sometimes you, you think, ah, phew, I wish she were home. But on the other hand, when you see those kids who are so happy, no, it's worth every second lost, no question. Sometimes a bit frustrating. What's your schedule for the week? She's always made time for me. Um, and even if she's busy, she always makes time. Even if it's not that much time, it's still quality time together. Very proud of you. Great. Bravo. Working at the School of Public Health at the University of New South Wales proved to be the perfect match for her grassroots program. The university has an objective of fostering not only learning but societal change, and that's what this program is all about. So to me, it was always a no brainer. Football United through UNSW was really the first one I'd seen which I knew could really drive great outcomes for kids who need football to change their lives. Since its launch in 2006, Football United has mushroomed in size, helping hundreds of disadvantaged kids across the country to integrate into Australian society, learning people skills, leadership skills and life skills along the way. In mid-2009, as the profile of the program continued to rise, Anne received an email from FIFA inviting her to bring a team of eight kids to participate in the Football for Hope Festival, an international event for underprivileged kids during the last week of the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. Football can connect people, and if you connect people, you have a direct dialogue, you are together. Football is a very contagious and very passionate sport. Sportsmanship is a very important part of life. The festival is an attempt by the governors of the world game to prove that football can and does have the power to change kids' lives. Football for Hope, the festival, is bringing kids from 32 countries in the world together through football to play a tournament to learn about each other, to exchange about their cultures, about their backgrounds, to hopefully grow together. But the journey to South Africa would trigger huge problems. Deciding which eight kids would get to go to Johannesburg and raising the massive funds required to transform Anne's dream into reality. The story of these kids going to the World Cup is a story about the magic of football, about the power of bringing completely diverse kids together from terrible backgrounds, watching them build Australia for the future. And I really think that this deserves to be told. It's an example to Australians, 
and it's an example to the world. Goodbye.